Hi, my name is Sylvie Chang, and I'm a seventh grader from Missouri. I live in St. Louis. St. Louis is a city filled with many different colors. Greens and yellows during the summer, reds and oranges during the fall, various shades of white during the winter, and pretty pinks during the spring. But year round, St. Louis is also filled with many different shades of beige, olive, brown, yellow, white, black, and much more. And I think it's the mosaic of these colors that makes St. Louis such a beautiful and diverse place. But sadly, not everyone has the same appreciation for the diversity of this city, as racism is prevalent in many aspects of our daily lives, from the use of racial slurs to racial profiling. And sometimes, I let myself dream. I dream about worlds galaxies away, where people don't make assumptions about you based on the color of your skin, where people don't make racist comments and jokes like they mean nothing, where people don't see the color of your skin. Because something as small and mundane as the color of somebody's skin should not dictate how a person is able to live their life. I wanted to know more about racism and its impact. So I googled racism and about 62 million results popped up. There were a lot of articles, but one that really caught my attention was an article written by the Washington Post on the Delmar Divide. The Delmar Divide splits St. Louis into two distinct halves. South of it are mostly black neighborhoods with low-income families, and north of it are mostly white neighborhoods with high-income families. This discovery shocked me. To know that in 2019, I live in a community that is so segregated is alarming. It made me wonder for the first time. As Americans, are we all united as one, or are the barriers of race still keeping us apart? I can relate to this as I am Chinese American. I've always felt out of place, neither fully Chinese nor American. My family ate din dinner with chopsticks, while my friends ate theirs with forks and spoons. On Sundays, I went to Chinese school to learn about my culture, while my friends went to church to study their religion. My family celebrates Chinese New Year, my friends celebrate Christmas. But despite the many differences between my friends and I, we also shared so many similarities. We laugh and chat with our classmates, we, symp we sympathize about hard tests and math together. We learn about our country's history and about our equal rights and free opportunities. But are all our opportunities truly equal? Do I, a Chinese American, have the same opportunities as, say, the white person sitting next to me? If we both worked in the same office, both put in equal amounts of time and energy, who would the manager choose to promote? That is where the walls of race block us apart. For some, these walls may be as high as Mount Everest, making it almost impossible to climb over. And for others, they may only be as high as a boulder. Studies have shown time and time again that these walls continually affect us, especially in the workplace. According to Pew Research, college-educated Black and Hispanic men earn 80% the hourly wages of white college-educated men. Thus, two people could have the same college degree, the same number of years of experience, but ultimately what decides how much they earn is the color of their skin. Also, according to Poverty Action Lab, white job applicants receive more callbacks than black applicants with the same resume. Researchers wanted to examine the levels of racial discrimination in the US. So they took identical resumes and gave them black or white sounding names. They then observed the number of requests employers had for interviews. Results found that the applicants with white sounding names had 50% more callbacks than the ones with black sounding names. This indicates that, all other things being equal, Race is still an important factor in the American labor market. Despite the many laws against racial discrimination, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, race still plays a large role in determining a person's success. Moving on to the big question itself, how to eliminate racism. To start, we need to educate young generations on a zero tolerance policy of racism. Teaching kids about racial discrimination and its impacts when they're young will embed in them a strong sense that racism is not to be accepted. Also, allowing free discussions at school about racism will allow kids to explore different perspectives of racism and race, and race itself. Conversations about race should be encouraged and welcomed, not shunned or rejected. Eliminating racism will not happen in years or even decades, but in generations. Thus, we must strive every single day towards eliminating it. America has always been hailed as a place of freedom and opportunity. That's why immigrants choose to come, after all. We are the epitome and shining example of democracy to the rest of the world. But decades after Martin Luther King gave his revolutionary I Have a Dream speech at the Washington Monument, we are still struggling to deal with racism in our own country. 
from police brutality to wage unfairness, racism is still very prominent today. But the thing is, we're Americans and we're hardy people. We pushed through the Civil War and we got through the Great Depression. Time after time, time, after time again, people said, oh, America's dead for sure. And time after time again, we have picked ourselves right back up, uh, right back up after we fell down. We've come this far, worked this hard, and we can push through those hardships once more. And maybe someday, the No More Divide will stand only as a symbol of the past. But until that day comes, you have to be united. You have to put aside your differences and work together. As I said before, eliminating racism will not happen in one day. There are still so many more steps to take, so many more mountains to climb. But we'll make it. We're Americans, after all. Thank you.